that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who equations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all this is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be saved. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen, amen. Lord, you did so much for me, man. Praise him. You know, the Lord told me uh, this verse this morning, found in uh, first, third John 2. Behold. Beloved, everybody say beloved. beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. You guys want to prosper? You want to be in prosperity? Read the word. Listen to the Holy Spirit. The spiritual prosperity. You want to be in good health? Raise your hands. Who wants to be in good health? Read the word. Get in the word. It's food for your flesh. Medicine unto your bones. Yeah. And then feed your spirit. Okay. You guys get into the word. 3 John 2. Yeah. I lift your name on high. Lord, 
I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show. Lift your name on high Lord, I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life Yes, I am, Lord I'm so glad you came to save us You came here, buddy You came from heaven to earth To show Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Everybody, help me now. Here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Open the 
ask you to open the eyes of our hearts this morning. Let your glory shine upon us. And we ask Holy Spirit to bind up any hearts that may be broken this morning, that may be hurting, and let the balm of Gilead, that healing salve of love, pour into every broken and cracked part and make it whole again. Pour out your power and love and restore unto each heart here this morning the joy of your salvation. Show us who we are in you. We ask for new revelations of the Father's love. We believe we are who you say we are. As it says in 2 Corinthians, but we all with open face Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you for changing our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts so that we may see you more clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Yeah. You can, can tell yeah. this is the first time I've done this. Yeah. Cool, man. You good. All right. So um, I got a couple of verses here and about the tithing, but uh, Domi was talking about prosperity earlier, and this is uh, part of what the verse here is talking about as well. So um, Deuteronomy 14, 28, and 29. Every third year... Instead of using 10% of your harvest for a big celebration, bring it into town and put it in a community storehouse. The Levites have no land of their own, so you must give them food from the storehouse. You must also give food to the poor who live in your town, including orphans, widows, and foreigners. If they have enough to eat, then the Lord your God will be pleased and make you successful in everything you do. So, originally... Um, the tithe was not as much money as we use today. We work jobs and then we get an income and we pay tithe on our income. Originally, people would just use tithe as everything that they grew, all their grains and the wine and the oil and the cattle. And they would give the best, like the first of the born of the animals and the best of all the grains and wine and everything, the crops of the field. And it was very food orientated. I like that because <laughs> I like food. Um, but I was thinking about it too. Um, does anybody have like a neighbor that might bring them oranges from their tree every once in a while? Maybe you're in a bag with your name on it. <laughs> I do. And does anybody here have some frozen bread in the freezer? <laughs> Compliments of the food or the um, pantry here? Well, that's a part of what the whole mission of the church is to do, is to make sure that everybody, all of God's creation, you know, is taken care of and that they have food to eat, both like physical food to maintain your body, but also spiritual food for your soul. And um, that's part of what the tithe is for. The tithe is to keep that whole thing going. The, um, where is that guy? Um, another part of it too is uh, 
when you're giving offerings, we hear the story of Cain and Abel, where one gave with a heart of giving and love, and the other one was like regretting, like, oh, I gotta do this. But that's the wrong attitude, I think, you know? And that's uh, where God had to step in and show him the right ways, like to, if you do the right thing, God will always bless you. And, and if you don't, you got trouble just lying there and wait for you. So I encourage everybody to not have the heart of, am I my brother's keeper? And why am I, you know, part of this? But rather to love one another and make sure everybody's taken care of, especially the people that are looking after you and blessing us with music, blessing us with messages, blessing us with food and all the different ministries that we do here. So I going to do the prayer and we're going to do the uh, tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you give us a heart of giving and a heart of thankfulness as we give uh, just the tenth percentage back of everything that you've given to us, dear Lord. You sustain us um, spiritually, physically, and emotionally all throughout the day, throughout the week and give us a family and a country that we can be blessed by, dear Lord. And I thank you that you allow us to do our little part to give back and maintain this whole thing and make us one little piece of the whole puzzle, dear Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, he's risen. And uh, if we go back to the story, we've, we've let the, left the disciples pretty confused. You know, they, they, didn't, they didn't quite get it because they were putting their faith in what they thought was the leader that had come to take over, you know, and, and that wasn't right. And they knew scripture like the Pharisees knew scripture. And that wasn't quite right either. Something was coming. The Holy Spirit was coming. <laughs> A voice from heaven that got to live inside us. Changed their whole paradigm. Every once in a while, I think we need to remember that. I know I do. Because I think I got, you know, wired. And it's like, no, not quite. <laughs> Hope this song reminds you to <clears throat> listen. Shema. Listen, I'm studying Hebrew again. <laughs> Shema, Israel. <laughs> Adonai Elohim. Adonai Echa. The Lord is one. Oh, I keep fighting voices in my head. Say I'm not enough And every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every Remind me once again just who I am Cause I need to know You say I am love When I can't feel a thing You say I am strong When I think I am weak and You say I believe. 
Great word. That, that's fun to say. Okay, you, hold on, let me turn myself down here. Is that a better? Is that better? Good? Yeah. Gadgets? Gadgets everywhere. <laughs> Have you ever planned for a perfect morning?
I tried, but it never worked out. It seems like every time I come in Sunday morning to prepare for worship and get the guys going, practice, there's always seemed to be an issue with something. Whether it's sound or you can't get the right notes or whatever it may be. But uh, it's a hectic morning. Everybody's praying for me. My wife's been praying for me because I'm nervous. And uh, I think just having yourself up here can be quite, um, right, Andy? <laughs> uh, we love you too. I've known Andy for a long time and Sarah, and I, I figured I'd ask him to be a part of uh, uh, the offering prayer this morning. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate, appreciate the team all the hard work they put in every week. I know we had a special guest last week, uh, John Mahi, who is a, an awesome and professional musician. He does that for a living almost every day, I think. But anyhow, um, before we begin, you see as the title there is, I believe it when I see it. And that's Thomas. One of, the 12, one of the 12 disciples, also called the twin. But before we focus on him, let's pray first. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, your abundant blessing upon each one of us. We are so grateful for your son, for your sacrifice, Lord, so that we can have peace, hope, eternal life. As we are here today, this morning, gathers our brothers and sisters in the Lord, I ask that you open our hearts to be mindful of your word and your promises to us that you always keep. May you be blessed, Lord, by our ways, the words that come out of our mouth, our actions. May, be, may we be a blessing to others as well in our community, in our homes, our workplaces. Thank you for the opportunities we have. Thank you for loving us so dearly and caring for us. In the name of your Holy Son, amen. But before I, we focus on Thomas, I want to read, actually read the whole chapter of John. It's actually from 1 to 29. If Kara have that on, um, on screen, you can read it with me. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And verse 1 begins with this. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken, taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they had laid him. Peter, therefore, went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooped down, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth lying there, yet they did not go in. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen and cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead, then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she, as she wept, she stood down and looked into the tomb. And she saw the two angels in white sitting, one at the head and, and the other at the feet. When the body of Jesus, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, woman. 
Why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. She saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples, that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things to her. Verse 19, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, while the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, again, peace to you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, then you are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now it comes now to Thomas. Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the prints of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Said that again. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. And reach your hands here and put into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen? Amen. As you age, you lose eyesight. So let me put on my glasses so I look better on camera. How many of you believe in superstitions? How many? Everybody, right? Everybody does. See, when I was young, Maybe about five, when I can remember things, five to 11 before I came to Hawaii. My parents used to always tell me, I used to ask them at night when we go to bed, there's a 99% a lizard would make a noise. The lizard would go, and I would have, my parents would say, you got to answer back. Because when you do, something good is coming. It's the saying that I've heard it growing up as a young kid. And I believe them. It says, oh, money's coming. 
Your grandparents are going to send money to us. So I, I was like, whatever, right? So every night, every time I would hear that, because I saw the evidence of money coming, but I don't know if that's the reason why it came, but I know my grandparents were in Hawaii. They would send us a little bit of money at that time because my, fam my dad, my mom, my family were the last ones to come here in the, in the 70s. So they would send us money sometimes. So every time, every night, my, the lizard would go, and I would answer back, oh, money's coming. You know what I mean? It's not just me. It's not just here. It's everywhere. Everybody believe in some, something or superstitious. But last, last week, we celebrated Easter. But there are two holidays in the year that are really, really meaningful to me. One is Christmas, because Christmas, what is the reason? The birth of Christ. Many of you have a, have a child. When the first child was born, you know, the excitement within yourself to see the child come to life. It's amazing, isn't it? That's why Christmas is always so uh, awesome to me. It's not just about gifts, but it's because of the gift that was given to us. The second holiday where most people come to is Easter. There are those people that come only to uh, Christmas and Easter. <laughs> Many of them are like that. But Easter is very special because Jesus rose again that day. He was born on Christmas. He rose again on Easter. Easter Sunday signif signifies the resurrection of Christ. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, which is on a Sunday, the first day of the week. And that is the reason why we are here every Sunday. No other reason. It's because he has risen Sunday, which is the first day of the week. That's why we, we should be celebrating every Sunday. Not just on Easter Sunday. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the reason why Christianity exists today. Do you know that? You see, in this day and age of information and technology, with a click of a button, you can pretty much find out about everything or about anyone. Back then, they didn't have that type of technology. It is easy to believe something when you see it with your own eyes. It is also easier to share something with someone when you actually see it with your own eyes. See, people can tell you great stories. And you can easily be fooled too. Same thing with media. There's a lot of truth, but there's a lot of lies too. So we can get caught up in all that stuff. See, we get fascinated by great stories, aren't we? Let me tell you another story. Okay, let me see. Okay, I have, I'm going to use Robbie and Andy as an example. I'm going to use uh, Domi and Pat as another example. And I'm going to use uh, Henry and Uncle Robert. These six men are great friends. They love to do everything together with their families, events, whatever it may be. They're always together doing things. But there's a time in our island. Oops. Sorry. As many of you, we have a, a lot of problem with wild pigs. Sorry about um, Domi had a, actually had a, Domi and Carol had a, a pet a pig boar for the last 15 years from baby time. And while they were on vacation, I guess a couple pit bulls got into the pen and, and killed their pet, which um, something that some something that they really love. While they were 
on vacation, they went to visit their daughter with their new son. So they're both brand new grandparents. Congratulations to you, but I'm sorry about your loss. But as many of you know that, that we have a lot of problems with wild pigs on the island. And sometimes I see them cross the streets, they get hit. And it's just a mess. But these guys, I forget the combination of the people was. But anyways, these friends met at Coquet. They went hunting one day. And, and they had a plan. They had a perfect plan going. So as they met there at 7 a.m. in the morning, they had all the equipment, their vests and everything, their permit to go hunting. The condition was that at 5 p.m., we all meet here at the same time. Same exact, exact place we will meet here. Say, okay, everybody, as we go on our way, be careful, watch, watch for each other. So they went hunting, they went on separate ways. Uncle Robert and, and Pat was together, and we had um, Andy and Robbie together. Uh, who else did I have? Domi and Henry. So anyhow, they all went. And about 5 to 5 o'clock p.m., here comes Domi and Pat. Let's just say Domi and Pat. Came back with their stuff. They got their stuff. They are so happy. They are so stoked. At 5 o'clock, the other two came back, and same thing. They were happy. Oh, man, it was an experience, a beautiful view, but had so much of them, but we could only get so, much, so many of them. Ten minutes went by, and the... And Robbie wasn't back yet. So they started to get worried. And so the guys were like, oh, what are you going to do, man? You know, we planned to be here at 5. Anyhow, 10 after 5, here comes Andy carrying the big, this boar, 200 pounds. <laughs> oh. Oh, man, I'm exhausted. So they're like, hey, Andy, where's Robbie? Robbie eventually fainted along the way, on the way back down. He was so tired, exhausted, he fainted. So why did you just leave him there? We asked him. Well, I figured nobody's going to take him. <laughs> I know the story was long, but, you know, he wasn't going to carry Robbie out of the, out of the, but anyhow. I hope you can tell that joke to others. But anyway, we get fascinated by stories. Because I saw you looking at me. And you were like, what's the punchline? Do we have the same fascination, though, with the stories of the Bible? I mean, the Bible, how many of you actually bring your Bible? It is the thing of the past, isn't it? Everybody have Bible apps, you know, use their phones. And if you forget your Bible at home, you don't turn around and go home. But if you forget your phone, you're going back home. Get it. We should have the same fascination. Is doubting bad? The question is, is doubting bad? You have to ask yourself that question. It all depends. It all depends where it leads you. Thomas was very different, though. Although Thomas is known to be the doubter, his doubt had a purpose. His doubt led to questions. His doubt was to seek answers. He wanted proof before he believed. How many of you watched Judge Judy? <laughs> I love that show. I love that lady. Awesome. She just tells it like it is. Yeah, she doesn't fool around, does she? She said, I'm not here in a courtroom because I'm beautiful. I'm here because I'm smart. That's what she said. <laughs> but in a courtroom... There's the prosecuting attorney, there's the lawyer, there's the jury. Both sides of the aisle has to present critical evidence to
to convince the jury to make a decision. They have done extensive research, gather evidence, photos, maybe evidence of wep weapons might have been used. And by having all this evidence present, it will help the jury make a decision, help the jury believe. You know, although Thomas had doubts, he had not allowed his doubt to further himself from Jesus. He did not idolize his doubt. He gladly believed when given reason to do so. He was an honest man who only wanted truth. Because even at one point in, in time when, I, when uh, it was plain to everyone that Jesus was in danger, only Thomas put into words what most of them were feeling. John eleven sixteen says, Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. Like Thomas, let's not settle into doubt, but to move on from them to decision, decision and belief. You see, doubt was never meant to be a permanent condition. Instead, it encourages rethinking. You get that? Doubt is never meant to be a permanent condition. Instead, it encourages rethinking. Its purpose is more to sharpen the mind than to change it. I mean, there are days when I wish I could actually see Jesus. You ever wish that? You ever wish to hear his voice talking to you? <laughs> what would it be like? We know so much about him. Let me try and see. We know so much about him, but yet we've never seen his physical presence. What would it be like? To touch him, shake his hand, and ask him for advice. What would that be like? Like Thomas, that's what he wanted. Gene, did you change this? It's the drummer's fault, yeah. Blame the drummer. You see, even though we have not seen him, and Thomas wanted to see his physical presence, see, God had a better plan, though. He knows exactly what's best for everyone. He has not limited himself to one physical body. He wants to be present at all times, everywhere. Even at this exact moment, he is here with us in the form of the Holy Spirit. That is the reason why he died and rose again. We can talk to him any day, anytime, anywhere. See, if you think about Thomas, you ever wonder where he was when Jesus appeared the first time? We may not know what that were about of Thomas when he first appeared, but Jesus knew. Jesus knew he wasn't going to be there. He knew that Thomas had doubts. He also knew that Thomas' doubt was honest. It was an honest doubt. He knew that Thomas wanted more than just hearing it. He wanted to see proof. You see, better to doubt out loud than to 
disbelieve in silence. You get that? If you look at Thomas, we can easily criticize him. We're supposed to know better because we've read the word. But before we do, we need to examine ourselves first. Because what Thomas struggles with, we too have that. We also have that struggle. So rather than criticizing him, we should learn from him. Because his doubt led him to seek truth and to know Jesus more and more. When Jesus appeared again after eight days, this time Thomas was present. I'm just trying to imagine what was going through his mind when he saw Jesus standing there in the midst. Was he ashamed? Maybe, I don't know. Was he nervous? Could have. But one thing I noticed though is that Jesus wasn't hard on Thomas. Rather, he was very compassionate to him. And he can be with us as well if our doubts are honest. He didn't question Thomas. He didn't say, why don't you believe? He didn't say that. Why weren't you here? I'm upset with you. He didn't, he didn't embarrass Thomas. But he knew exactly what Thomas said to the other disciples. How did he know that? <laughs> because he is God. Jesus said to Thomas in verse 27, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hands here and put it into my side. Verse 28, And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus could have been hard on him. Instead, he helped Thomas conquer his doubt. He helped Thomas conquer his doubt. He helped him grow more. Thomas wanted proof, like Mary. And the other disciples had received. He wanted the same thing. Thomas, seeing what he wanted to see as proof, Jesus said to him in verse 29, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. You see, his doubt didn't let him give up. Rather, he continued to seek answer. He never gave up on his fellow disciples either. Do you think he was upset with them? You know, if somebody tells you something and you don't believe, sometimes you can easily be angered because you want proof. He might have been disappointed with them or maybe angry of himself for not being there the first time Jesus has appeared. I would have been too. Oh, man, after following Jesus, And he died and rose again. And someone else saw him before him. I'm sure he felt sad maybe, disappointed. But he has always been loyal to the disciples. He's never given up on them. You see, sometimes people need to doubt to believe. I've done that. Have you? We all have. Every day. <laughs> Where did it lead you? Where did your doubt lead you? 
Do we give up easily when we don't see proof? You see, doubting is a part of life. But it shouldn't be a way of life. Let us use our doubts, like Thomas did, as a means of seeking the truth, getting answers, and deepen our faith because God will reveal himself to those honestly seeking him. You get that? God loved Thomas like he did everyone else. Jesus knew Thomas's heart. He also knew that Thomas not only wanted to seek proof, but wanted his faith to rest on facts and not fiction. When he appeared again to the disciples, Thomas being with them, Jesus said again, peace to you. I think he said it three times in that chapter. This saying of Jesus is the most frequently stated statement to all believers. Again, what was going through his mind? Jesus standing there. Shock. Wanted proof. Because he wanted proof, he didn't give up. He kept seeking, he kept getting, he kept asking questions and seeking for answers. Jesus did exactly that. Jesus offered him exactly what he was seeking for by asking to, him to come. Come, Thomas. Reach your fingers here. See the print of the nails, Thomas. Put your hands to my side, Thomas. The Bible doesn't exactly say, I can't find it anywhere, if Thomas actually touched Jesus or not. Because after he said that, all he said was, my Lord, my God. He exclaimed and said, my Lord, my God. See, Thomas humbled himself, fell on his knees, and proclaimed Jesus as Lord. He saw what he needed to see to read up his doubt. He could have easily given up because Jesus didn't show up till after eight days. I mean, imagine those days that he had to wait for proof. He didn't know when Jesus was going to show himself again. But see, that's the kind of stuff we have to deal with sometimes. When things happen, you don't get answers right away, do we? You just give it time. You just keep praying and asking the Lord to show himself to you, guide you, guide our eyes, our hearts, our thoughts, our minds. So that we can deal with difficulties of life. We can deal with our doubts. I've had those difficult moments. This last few years has been hard. Sorry, I get emotional. I had to ask God why. Why you took my mom? Why you took my dad? So soon, so close to each other. We're orphans, kids. But he had a plan for them. And that, it took time for me to really understand the reasoning. Many of you have lost our loved ones. We would never want to see death on anyone. We fear death. That's the common thing that most people fear about is death. But in reality, we have to have face it one day. I will face that one day. I think about my sister Stacy. But in her heart, she knew Jesus was in it. Gives her peace, comfort. It gives me peace knowing where they are now. 
I often thought myself, Jesus probably said, well, they're suffering so much. I don't want you to suffer any longer either. So I'll take them away so that you can care for your family. And they're suffering from this disease in this painful world. How are we? Can we learn from Thomas? I sure hope so. Because Jesus added at the end of verse 29, after he told Thomas that you must believe, not unbelieving, Jesus went on to say, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's us. That pertains to us. This saying is referring to everyone who will one day believe and follow, although they have not had the privilege of seeing Jesus physically like Mary and and the disciples had. See, we live in a fallen world. In a fallen world where there's so much pain and uncertainty. But God knows exactly what keeps us from falling apart. His plan was the greatest plan. Because he knows what's best for the world. And so many, so many rejects God. Although so many reject God, he is not chosen to sacrifice his one and only son for just a particular group of people. But for all people. The sacrifice of his one and only son is intended to give us hope to give us joy, real peace, and eternal life. Although we have not seen him physically, Jesus, we have not seen the print of the nails like Thomas wanted to see, or the scar on his side. One day when Jesus returns, we too, will have the privilege of seeing those marks. Jesus said that we are blessed if we can believe without seeing. Hard to do, right? Until this day, still hard. But reading his word is all we need as proof. His physical presence would not make him any more real than he is now, here with us. While we are still here on earth, we continue to trust and obey him because those who do will grow in understanding. As I close, I'm going to call the worship team back up here. So let me close with this. When we have doubts, let us not allow it to harden our hearts. Instead, let's use it to deepen our faith and our relationship with Jesus. Remember what Jesus said. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Again, like I said, Doubting is a part of life, but it shouldn't be a way of life. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for your presence in all of us. Your Holy Spirit that dwells in our hearts, Lord. We come before you with praise and thanksgiving for each day and each opportunity that you've given us. We just want to bless you, Lord, with our actions, our ways. Thank you for your son, whom you sacrificed for us. May you be blessed today, Lord, as we go our way, and that we may be blessed others as well. Thank you again for loving us so dearly. We honor you. 
we praise you, we give you glory in the name of your Holy Son. Amen. We're going to sing a last song here. Let me get back on the stage here. Amen. Thank you, Arno. Thank you, Arno. Great message. You know who reigns, guys? God reigns. May he reign in us. May he reign in our lives. Um, if he does not reign in your life and you don't know how to ask him to, uh, come and talk to me. I will help you. All right. Let's uh, do this last that. song. You said that. You said God reigns and the sun came out. So that's just <laughs> how it is. Wow. When God reigns, the sun comes out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah.
reigns. May he reign in your life today, guys. Have a good day.